shrouded in mists and shielded by mysteries. Deep in the high altitude rainforests of Kerala is a creature little known and less appreciated. The project that we're working on is based on a species called the toadskin frog. It's a critically endangered species. It's a terrestrial species which is found on leaf litter. What we found through our research is that the species is sort of isolated to sholas above 1,300 meters, which can go up to about 1,700, 750 meters. incredible array of amphibians, almost 80% of which are endemic. These frogs live in a unique ecosystem that's amongst the 10 most biodiverse areas on the planet. The Western Ghats has more than 380 species and most of them occur in such restricted ranges that a lot of them immediately qualify to one of the threat categories. Toadskin frog gets its name from being toad-like in every aspect. Very, very warty looks very mucky. The first reaction that you would get to a photograph of this frog is, is yuck. High mountains and lashing monsoons might be prime frog territory, but make wildlife researcher Arun and Setu Parvati's work much harder. Battling tough terrain and innumerable leeches though is sometimes easier than getting people interested in their beloved frogs. So when you really think of the reaction of People, when you, when you tell, okay, do you want to protect frogs, they'll be like, why? Then you tell them, okay, if, if frogs are not there, there'll be loads of insects that might harm you. After that, they'll be like, okay. And we purposely chose this frog as part of this project because it would always be sidelined because of its looks. There's a higher chance that a frog goes extinct than a tiger or an elephant because frogs tend to be very restricted to a specific uh, habitat type. So you've got to really safeguard that location from a lot of threats. The creeping advance of humanity has long threatened the frogs. The introduction of tea a century ago fragmented the forest. Small hamlets sprung up across the hills and its people were forced to depend on the sholas to survive. Seemingly innocuous activities like firewood collection affects frogs because it reduces the habitat of the insects that they prey upon thus diminishing the froglet's chances of survival. When you remove firewood out of a place, you remove uh, good areas where frogs can rest. So your animals are sort of stressed because of that. So as a part of our outreach initiative, we're trying to introduce these mud stubs. So these mud stubs uh, increase the efficiency of the stub. So lesser firewood is used. That would be about five to six kilos that is used instead of eight to ten kilos that be used per day by each family. Deep-seated local beliefs that these completely insectivorous animals feed on cardamom also lead to the toadskin frogs being hunted. Now we are trying to tell them that they do not eat and you don't really have to kill the amphibians out there. However, firewood collection, plantations and misguided beliefs are less of a threat compared to the loss of the forests themselves. A freshly burnt patch of once vibrant jungle, now bereft of life, stands silent witness to the devastation fire can cause. Just one out-of-control blaze can destroy a species that has taken nearly 50 million years to adapt and evolve to the very same habitat that so thoughtlessly set ablaze. In an effort to give the frogs a fighting chance, Arun and Setu Parvati have taken on the onus of restoring the Sholas. Many bumpy miles later, it's time to unload the Shola saplings. Carefully selected, these plants are native to this area and once grown, will offer valuable habitat to a range of wildlife. After clearing invasive ferns, the team plants a mix of Sholas marking them for future reference so they can gauge which ones grow the best. The Conservation Leadership Programme has enabled us to do something that we're really passionate about. There are very few organisations that, that would let us restore habitat, that would enable us to set up stoves with local households, run a monitoring programme with the Forest Department, all in just one go. 
No boring classroom session this. Foresters learn about the frogs they're likely to meet from brightly colored cards they can keep as a handy pocket guide. And once the theory session is complete, it's time to get their hands dirty. We try and uh, train them to do a monitoring or how to do an amphibian survey or how to handle them. Rambling through the jungle, turning over leaf litter, the guards search long and hard for the toad-skinned frog. But to no avail. All isn't lost, however, for they see a few other species of frog that hold their attention. They help us in all our monitoring initiatives. Whether we do transects, whether we're doing uh, uh, surveys at new sites, uh, we have uh, guards and watchers coming along with us. Without the CLP, I don't think we would have been able to pull off something like this. We would have just had to do more and more ecology. This increased interest and attention in conserving frogs at the official level comes not a moment too soon. The sleepy tea towns of Munar are undergoing a sea change that neither its environment nor its infrastructure has come to grips with. In fact, our environment through tourism is quite huge. One thing is the biggest constructions, unplanned constructions. So when a new property is built, it means you lose more habitat. They want the streams to look at, but they, they really don't want anything to be growing around there. With every single tree cut, more of your smaller animals tend to move out. We have always going beyond the carrying capacity of our land. Where you, you, will, you will have only 20 people and there you have 200 people. So consumption of water, consumption of electricity. So there are many ways which is affecting the nation. Traffic, pollution, waste, all the ills of city living in the heart of what should be untouched jungle. While each of these affect the frogs, together they threaten Munar itself with consequences that could be calamitous. Hills diced for high-rise hotels, sholas sliced to improve the view. In an area with soft soil and harsh monsoons, this is a recipe for landslides. And while Arun and Setu cannot do much to stop human depredation, they can take the first steps to ensure that their beloved frogs have a fighting chance. So what we're starting off a very small ex situ sort of a thing where we're trying to see how one could keep tadpoles and how you could successfully rear them till they metamorphosize into little froglets. Tadpoles from common frog species are kept in tanks maintained at the same temperature and salinity as the pools in which they were found. As they grow, constant monitoring of both the forest pools as well as the tanks teach the team about how the tadpoles evolve into froglets. One day, they hope to set up a breeding unit for the endangered toad-skinned frog with permission from the proper authorities. We not only know what are the ecological factors that, that help support them in a system, but we also know how to take care of them in case a big calamity were to occur. Today, though, it's time for another expedition into the forest to see if the team can find any of the frogs. This time, Arun and Setu Parvati decide to head late in the evening. Many hours and much ground later, a call cut short the cries of the cicadas. Success! The elusive frog has dined to give us a glimpse of itself. This is the critically endangered toad skin frog that we see here in this, inside the Shola forest. It's very well camouflaged. This is the frog and probably the mud around it is also looking the same. One point two six five centimeters. Look at the frog. It's so warty. It looks so unlike a frog. It looks more like a toad. 
what we found with the toad skin frogs that we're working on is that they're brilliant indicators. So the moment you see the habitat that they occur in, you could say that the forest is almost like an old forest. After a hard night's work, the heavens open up and the long-awaited monsoon crashes down. Perfect weather for these rain-loving frogs. Perhaps tonight will be the night when they come out and create another generation, when they buy some more time to allow the humans they share space with to evolve and empathize with these unique creatures.